Okay, so we are our our Gemara today is Daf Yud Gimel, and we will begin on Daf Yud Beis Amut Sheni. Uh, three lines from the bottom, Amar Rav Yehuda. So uh, we are discussing things that are kosher to be used for schach. As you know, uh, it has to be uh, something that's. Let me just. Hi, Lewis. We just began. Hi. Yes, we just began with three, three lines from the bottom of the Yud Beis Omer Cheni Omer Rav Yehuda. We learned yesterday that there was a uh, that there are two uh, rules that you need for kosher schach. One that it has to be something that's not makabel tuma, and one and two it has to grow from the ground. So from that you learn that, for example, let's say I would uh, put schach on my roof, uh, on my sukkah made of loaves of bread. So loaves of bread come from the ground. That should be kosher, but it's not kosher because it's food, and food becomes susceptible to tuma. So it's not a kosher schach. So what the Gemara is now discussing is there are some types of plants that are not so edible, but they are edible somewhat. Are they kosher for schach? So Amar Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda said. It. I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly taich. I think I don't have an English, uh, but I think they, I saw that they taich it as licorice. So they're licorice plant, ushvartsre, and that's uh, that is wormwood. So I, 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 I grabbed, I grabbed a picture of it. Anybody have it like this? This is wormwood. I don't know. It's a plant. So Rashi says it's not edible. It has wide leaves. And it and it grows in the in the Godel Biyarim. It grows in forests. You could use them as chach. And the reason why you could use them as chach is because is because um, the reason why you could use them as chach is because they are ainam uh, machel adam. They're not considered food. So obviously, the Gemara is telling you a chiddush that uh, you would have thought that since some people use it maybe as uh, medicinal purposes, it would be considered food. So it's kamash malon, it's not considered food, and you could use it as chach. I, I, I'm just throwing out an idea. I always wonder, there are some foods that are not edible unless you cook them. For example, potatoes. So can potatoes be used as chach as long as you didn't cook them? Because maybe when you didn't cook them, it's not considered edible food, and therefore it's not makabal tumah. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the halacha. Abaya Oma, b'shushai m'sach, gelada use chach licorice, you can't use wormwood. Now, why wouldn't I use wormwood? My tama. So he says, Kivan the sorry rechayu shavik lehuvenafet. Oh, new reason. Since this wormwood, and I don't think it's so. I mean, if it's wormwood, it doesn't seem that way. But it gives off a very, very bad smell, and therefore, if you put that up as chach, people will leave your sukkah. So it's almost like the, uh, it's not even a good sukkah midiraisa because it's teishvul kein taduru. And, and, and therefore, you, you'd leave the sukkah, so it would be a puzzle of schach to use wormwood. And again, I was wondering if somebody has COVID and can't smell anyway, uh, it, would that be a kosher sukkah for him? Anyway, another thing. Amar Rav Khanim Barav Rav Khanim Barav said, Hani hizmi, if you have thorn bushes, vihigi is shrubs, right? You know, uh, shrubs are, you know, this. So, you know, shrub bushes, basically. Now he says, you're allowed to use the meschach. But Abaya Omar, Abaya says, Behizi you're allowed to use thorn bushes as chach, behigi, but shrubs, loy mesach inon, you're allowed to use as chach. My timer, what's the reason? Kevin de Nostru Terpaihu Shavak Luvenopic. Since the leaves, the small leaves fall down, continuously fall down, they'll end up in your food. So you're gonna leave the sukkah anyway. So therefore it should not, it cannot be used for schach. Now, according to this reason, it could be used for walls. It just can't be used for schach because it'll fall into your food. But the other wormwood, which has a bad smell, and, and that's the reason why you're leaving the sukkah, you probably cannot use it for walls as well. The Maris continues. Amarav Gidol Amarav. Hai apuksa dedila vikla mesachachem bahu. Afagav dagidi egebedei shumayim loishme eged. We learned yesterday that you're not allowed to put bundles of like wood on top to use that as chach. You can't put a bundle, a tied bundle on top of your schach. But what happens if you have something that looks like this? 
that it's a tie. You see this picture? It's actually a offshoot of a palm tree, which has one root, but they have all these like uh, uh, sticks sticking out of it. So it's tied together from heaven. It's tied together on the bottom. Can I use that as chach? Would it be under the psul of not using um, of not using a bundle, not using a tied bundle? So the Gemara says, eged bidei shemayim, something that was tied through heaven, loishme eged. That's not called a tie. Now afagav the hadar ogedlu. Now even one step further, even if I tied it on top, so basically I tied together this fan. This, uh, this fan looking piece right over here. This is what he did in this picture. He tied it. So it was tied, it was connected at the bottom. It just was flying all over the place and you tied it on top. It still would be a kosher sukkah. Why? Because uh, if you're tying one unit, it's not considered a tie. A, a bundle is something that has more than one piece in there. But this is basically is one unit. One unit is not under the prohibition of using a bundle. A bundle is a few pieces. And we'll see how many pieces in a moment. How many pieces make up this bundle? I mean, I kept showing you this picture yesterday uh, of the guy putting up the, the, the schach on top of the, a bundle. But how many makes up a bundle to decide that it's usher to use that as schach? We'll discuss that in a moment. But uh, be that as may, if it's one unit, even if you tie it, it's not a problem. Amba Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, Amba Ravina Bashela, he said, Hari Dukre Dekani, same idea, an offshoot of reeds, instead of uh, offshoot of a palm tree, it's offshoot of reeds, it has the same idea, it has one root at the bottom that joins together a whole bunch of pieces that uh, grow out of it. Mesachin Bu, you're allowed to use that as, even though they are tied together. Because Egebedei Shemayim, because it's tied through heaven, Lo Shemay Eged, that's not called a tie. It's Afagav, and even though the Hadar Agedahu, even if you put a tie around it, Igebechad, if you tie one unit, Lo Shemay Eged, that's not called an Eged. Tanya Nami Hochi, also we learned the same idea. Konim Vidoikronim Sachig Men. You're allowed to use reeds, and we don't know what this means, Doikronim, but reeds, you're allowed to use as Chach, plain reeds. So the so Gemara says, Konim, Pshita, a reeds, simple, you could use a schach. What's the, what's the Chiddush? You could use reeds. So the Gemara says, Einmo konim shal doikrinin You're allowed to use reeds that come out of one unit at the bottom. It, it's one root, one offshoot of reeds. Again, it's this picture, it's this picture that he has over here. This, although it uh, comes in many different pieces and it's tied together, but this is tied by heaven. Heaven put them together as one unit. That is not the iser of using that, of using bundles for Yitzchak. That would be permitted. Comes the Gemara says, now the Gemara switches gears, and you'll see this, the Gemara switches gears back and forth to Nyone Pesach. The Gemara says, Another statement was said by this group, Rav Chizda, was said in the name of Ravina Bar Shela. Hani Marisa de Agma. You know, the moror that has, it's called moror of the meadow. Now, you know, you're supposed to use romaine lettuce. So let's call this the romaine lettuce from the meadow. So so the, the, he says, You're allowed to use that as moror on Pesach. Now, that is a simple idea. You would think it's a simple idea. Um, what's the Kiddush? It's called romaine lettuce. But the, the since it has another name to it. It's called romaine lettuce of the meadow. I would think that it's not this, the, the, the romaine lettuce that the Mishnah is talking about that can be used for Mora. Kamash Malon, it is. That you could use it for Mora. So the Gemara says, wait a second. Mesave, I'll ask you a question. There's a concept called Ezoi. Ezoi means a hyssop. And a hyssop is, is, uh, uh, is a grass that was used to spray, let's say, many in many of the services that we do, uh, you know, spraying the tomei mace from the paraduma waters, you stuck a hyssop into the water and use that to spray, or spraying a mitzora in his uh, purification process. All that, the Torah says, use an azoid. So the, the Raisa says, 
use an Aza of a hisop, Veloy Aza of Yavad. You cannot use a hisop that's called hisop, Greek hisop, Veloy Aza Kaikali, or a blue hisop, Veloy Aza of Midbari or the Midbar hisop, Veloy Aza of Romy, not the Roman hisop, Veloy Aza of Shiesh Loy Shane Levi. Not any hisop that has another name to it. It has like a surname to it. It has to be called plain Aza. Uh, I, um, this is how a hyssop looks. So I guess maybe this won't be kosher because it's blue, kuchali. But this is what I got off the internet. So what you see is that when the Torah specifies something, you can't add a surname. The surname would not be kosher. So therefore, why is the uh, romaine lettuce of the, of the meadow kosher? It's a shame levi. It has a, a bar, another name to it. It's called not only Maror, but it's called Maror of the Meadow. And we see that if you add another name to it, it, it invalidates it uh, as, as, as uh, to be used as Maror, just like it should invalidate it. It was used for Aza when it had another sur surname to it. Answers the Gemara, Amar Abaya, anything that had its name changed before Matan Torah, then be a doer sheesh loim shame levai. If the Torah had another name before Matan Torah, and the Torah said, let's say it was called something with a surname during the giving of the Torah, and the Torah said, uh, use something that's without the surname, then of course the Torah was specific. Don't use the the the, the one that has the surname to it. So in Azov, the Torah says use an Azov. So Ezev Yovo and Ezev Kochel, all these things existed during the time of, of the Torah. Now, not that the Greek was around. The type of species that was around existed prior to uh, the giving of the Torah. It was known that there was different meaning, different, different species, and therefore the Torah was only wanted you to use the Ezev and not these other similar types. That's what the Torah says. And, and uh, Vahani, these, but the moror of the meadow, it's no different than the moror that was before Matan Torah. It's just after Matan Torah, they just, you know, made it more special, calling it moror of the meadow. If, if To give you an example, I'll tell you a Jaffa orange, right? So you'll know that there's no difference between a Jaffa orange and a Sunkist orange. But yet, if I told you a blood orange or a mandarin, or uh, tangerine, you know that I'm talking about something different. So if Lahabdal, if the Torah would have said use an orange, you wouldn't be allowed to use all the other blood oranges or something like that, because that's not a plain orange. But uh, if the Torah says use an orange and you use a Jaffa orange, so it's just because it has the name Jaffa added to it, it just tells you where it came from, but it doesn't, it doesn't change that it's, it's something different than what the Torah wanted. So that's exactly the same idea. This moral of the meadow could, could really be what the Torah was talking about. Rava Rav says, he says, same idea. Even, even the moral of the meadow, it's not really, in, if you look in the, in the encyclopedia, it wouldn't classify it as moral of the meadow. Hani Marisa de Shtomashmaya, it's really called plain moral. Evahai de Korele Marisa de Agma, Mishum de Mishtakach Ba'agma. People call it the, the Mora of the meadow because you find it in the meadow, but it's not, even in the classification books, it's not called Mora of the meadow. So it's the same idea. It's a, it's a surname, but it's only in the, and the professionals use it, but plain, most people know it, know it as plain Mora. And therefore this type of Chazeres, this type of Roman lettuce is permitted to be used on, on uh, Pesach. Next Gemara, new Gemara. Back into the, into the groups. Remember, we said that you're not allowed to put a bundle onto the, on, to use as chach, right? So if you're using twigs, obviously you need a lot of twigs to make it a bundle. Let's say you're using big items. Let's say you're using big pieces of, uh, of reeds. So, so the, the, what is called a bundle that will be under the prohibition that you can't use it. So if you do tie just one piece together, loishmei eged. That's not called it a, a tie, and therefore it would not invalidate a sukkah just because you have a, 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 a bow around one piece. Shalish, if you tie three big pieces together, shmei eged, that's called a unit. That's called not a unit, but a, a group, and that cannot be used as chach. You have to untie them. 
Shnayim, what happens if you have two together, right? You have two of them together. What would that be the din? So that, says the Gemara, is Machloikis Rabbi Yaisi Rabbanim. It would be a, a disagreement between Rabbi Yaisi Rabbanim. The Tanah we learned in the Mishnah. Now, Mitzvah's Ezer. The, the, now, here closely, there's a mitzvah to sprinkle. When you're sprinkling somebody with the Paraduma waters, you have to have three uh, hyssops together. And then you dip those three pieces of grass into the waters, and then you sprinkle the guy. So mitzvah's Ezer, the mitzvah of Ezer. Now, it's not clear what he means, but let's assume this is the Chachamim who hold that mitzvah's Ezer means it must be, in order to make it kosher, is you have to have three uh, roots. Each one has to be the, the hyssop with the root connected to it. And the three stems attached to the root. And then you tie those three pieces of grass together. And then that's a kosher hyssop thing that you can use for, for your tool for sprinkling somebody. Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, Rabbi Yaisi says, mitzvah eizav. He also says, mitzvah eizav shloisha gibaylam. He says mitzvah eizav is to use three stems. But he adds, ushiyarov shanayim. But let's say you use three, and then after a while, one, you know, broke off and, and it's unusable anymore. You don't have to throw the whole thing out. If you still have two left, it's still kosher. But, but, and the stems, how, how big the stems have to be, it doesn't have to be any size. It could, you can have a, a, you know, an inch big. You know, the hyssop could be just an inch and it could still be kosher. Uh, you know, apparently the way I'm reading this is that this hyssop wasn't such a common plant in Israel and therefore uh, it wasn't so easy to replace. So the truth is, so you need three to start off with, says Rabbi Yaisi. But if you, if you have two uh, left, it's still a kosher tool to use for sprinkling. Because since we, we're thinking now that since Rabbi Yaisi said, since Rabbi Yaisi said that you, if it remains two, that means Rabbi Yaisi wasn't so strict. Even if you start off with two, it's also okay. But Rabbi Yaisi says, mitzvah says, mitzvah what did Rabbi Yaisi mean by that? He means the mitzvah, lechatchila, really to mitzvah. You want to do a nice mitzvah, take three, but two is okay. So now, Rabbi Yaisi says mitzvah. Rabbi Yaisi says shloisha is only a mitzvah, but really you can get away with two. So Rabbi Yaisi holds two is good. It's still called an eged. The rabbanan shloisha la'akev. According to rabbanan, you actually need three to make a group. So that to answer our question, what makes constitute a group? A tied group. So according to Rabbanan, it's exactly three. According to Rabbi Yaisi, it would seem Rabbi Yaisi would hold that two make a group. So even two would pass a sukkah. According to Rabbi Yaisi, if you have two big reeds tied together, that wouldn't be kosher schach. So that's the Gemara says, hold it. You're saying Rabbi Yaisi says two is good? For well, Atanya, we learned that Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi says, Eza if Tchilasoy Shnayim. Rabbi Yaisi says, Ezov has to start off, if you started off using two, Ushiyar of Echen, and then you remained with one, puzzle, it's puzzle. And Rabbi Yaisi says, Rabbi Yaisi is strict. You have to start off with three. If you remained with two at the end, but if you start with three, that's the main thing. So we see Rabbi Yaisi is strict that three is the, is the starting point to make a group, not two. So, how, so the Gemara says, Epa. okay, you're right. Because really, Rabbi Yaisi says mitzvahs Ezev Shloisha, and the Chachamim also says mitzvahs Ezev Shloisha. So which one meant strict? So you're going to say like this, Rabbi Yaisi Shloisha Le'akev. According to Rabbi Yaisi, the mitzvah is, you have to start off with three. The Rabbanam Shloisha Le'mitzvah. According to Rabbanam, uh, uh, Shloisha is the mitzvah. You could start off with two. So again, the Rabbanam are the one that hold that two make a group, and it's Rabbi Yaisi who hold that the only way to make a group is three. Vatanya, and this Vatanya is like a proof. Vatanya, that's the truth. Here's a, 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 a Brysa that is the opinion of the Rabbanam that told two is enough because the Brysa says, Ezev that starts off with two and ends up with one, that's kosher. Now the Brysa continues and says something strange and we're going to be masmerate. The ain't a puzzle, it doesn't remain puzzle. It doesn't remain puzzle until the beginning and the remainder is one. That means if you start off with one and end up with one, then it's possible. So wait a second. Shiyar of Echad puzzle. 
you're trying to say if you re- left over with one, it's pasul. The beginning of the brisa says ha'amrit shiarav echad kosher. You started off the brisa saying if you left over with one, it's kosher. So how could you like uh, make a switcheroo over here? The brisa said th- on the three lines from the bottom, chilosa shnayim start with two shiarav echad and you end up with one, it's still kosher. Ella, you're misreading the brisa. We go to Ahmed Beis, you give a Ahmed Beis, top line. Ela Ema, Ashate Tchilose Kishyarev Echad. What makes something possible? If you, the beginning, you use one, which is only supposed to be the remainder one, then it's possible. So that's what's possible. If you start off with one, which is only kosher if it's a remainder, but if you start off with one, it's possible. But if you start off with two, and then after a while you lose one, uh, you could still use it because you started it off with two. And that makes it, makes it kosher. And that is the sheet of the Rabbanan. Rabbanan, who said the mitzvah, they didn't mean the mitzvah that you have to use three. They, really, you could use two. And according to Rabbi Yossi, you have to th- make three make a group. And same thing with sukkah. According to Rabbi Yossi, what makes a, a, a bundle group? You have to have three. According to Rabbanan, two would make a group. Now, I just point out just a side point that we keep telling you that for the sprinkling of the paraduma waters, you have to take three pieces of grass. But nowhere in the Chumash, in Parshas Chukas, does it say take three pieces of grass and use that as spr- sprinkling. Uh, uh, the Torah doesn't say, uh, the Torah just says, uh, and then you, you, you sprinkle. It doesn't say take three of them. So uh, the, there, Taisus deals with that. And Taisus says there must have been some Gezeir Shava between... Uh, where it says by Pesach, Kachtem Agudas Ezoiv, to Paradumo, where it says Lokach Ezoiv, so you make a Gzeir Shavad that just like by during the night of Pesach, we took three, three, three items, so when you're sprinkling the Paradumo, you take three Ezoivs. Anyway, back to Gemara switches back to Sukkah again. Darish Merema, Hanech Asurasa de Sura, Masachikam, Bahu, these Asurasa, the, the, these are bundles of reeds that were meant to be sold in the in the street and really they're tied together but they're not meant to stay tied together you see you see let's say when you get coins from a bank right they're put into a a little thing that wraps them all the quarters together but in the end when you take it home you you unwrap it so so the same idea over here it's meant to be unwrapped right away these wrapped reeds of surah and the reason why they're wrapped, Afagab the Agadan, even why they're wrapped or tied, is Liminyana Ba'almahud Agdan. They're just wrapped because you should know they're selling, let's say, a few at a time. There was a known number that they put into the package, so to speak. They tied, like, say, seven together and sold it that way. But when you took it home, you, most people unwrapped it. So if you use that prior to you unwrapping it, you put it as kach, it's kosher. Because that everybody knows is, is meant to be unwrapped and not to, it was never left there not to be unwrapped. Omar Ababa, Rababa said, Hani Tsrufe de Urbane. Tsrufe de Urbane is this picture over here. You look over here, this is a place where a hunter who's trying to catch birds would hide under this. It's made out of uh, uh, willows, willow trees. It's tied on the top, it's tied on the bottom. The hunter would stand in here, watch a bird, and out of nowhere, come and ca- catch the bird. So the Gemara says, what could be wrong with that? You could use that as chach. As soon as you take untie the top part, it becomes kosher. So the Gemara asks a question, just because you untie the top, this is tied on top and on bottom. It's, untie, it's still tied on the bottom. You see in the picture over here, they have a ties on the bottom and they have a tie on the top. So just because you unwrap this part and you use it as chach, but wait, but it's still connected at the bottom. So the Gemara says, okay, I'm going to pop the Sharlu. It only, the only way to make a kosher is if you untie both the top and the bottom. It comes along, Rav Huda, the Rav Yeshua, he says, Afilu even if you want to say that it is not untied at the, at the bottom. Once you have an egg, a tie, that once you untie one side, you can't carry it around. It'll come apart, eventually come apart. So even prior to you untying the bottom, you know once you untie the top, this whole thing is coming apart. And therefore, 
even prior to you untying the, the bottom, it still can be used as chach. So you don't have to untie both. New Gemara back into Pesach. Abba Rababa Meshmuel. Rababa said in the name Meshmuel, Yerakesh Amru Chachamim, Odem Yotze Behem Yedei Chavosai Bepesach. The vegetables that the Chachamim said that you could use for Pesach as Mara. There's a certain vegetables that you could use. Now, vegetables, the vegetables, we're talking about vegetables that cannot be yet be Mechabal Tumor. As Tysus explains, is that they didn't sprinkle water on them. You know, in order for a food to become susceptible for Tumor, it cannot, uh, it, it, water has to come onto it. But if water did not come of it, it's not susceptible to Tumor. So what happens if you use that as the roof of your, of your tent? Now, if you, if you, you know the halachas of oil ha mace, which means that if you have a, a concrete roof, right, and you have a mace underneath, so of course, then the mace tumor spreads to the entire room, but does not go to the second floor because the concrete room is the concrete roof is a chatzitza, an interruption of the tumor from going upwards. So here, and that's not just concrete, anything, any roof that's not macabre tumor, that's not macabre tumor technically should be able to uh, block Tuma from going upwards. So here we have an interesting Kiddush, that this type of roof that met with these type of vegetables, Mevian Esa Tuma, they actually can make the room full with Tuma. In other words, they act as a, as a roof that make it an oil. But the Enchoitz is in the Mifnea Tuma. The Tuma that's inside the room will actually penetrate to the second floor. And the question is why? If this is not makabal tuma, this uh, vegetables that you're using as a roof should now block the tuma from going upwards. And we're saying it doesn't block the tuma. The tuma could actually penetrate and go to the second floor. And the answer to that, which the Gemara is going to say in a moment, is that it's a zera derabonim because eventually these things are going to crumble and dry out and crumble. This roof is going to fall apart. And therefore, if a roof is going to fall apart, we consider it as if temporarily we consider it as if it's there. But long term, we consider it as if it's not there. It's looked like and it's empty space. And therefore, the, the tumor can actually penetrate mid Rabbanon to go up to the next floor. And same thing, we view it as a poislim basuka mishum avir. We don't view it as chach posel, even though it's a food that potentially could be makabal tumor. But we view it as chach, as empty space. Now, there is a difference between empty space and chach posel. Empty space, the shear of empty space is three tfachim. In other words, let's say you have a sukkah and you have a space in the middle of your sukkah, you didn't have enough chach, but it's less than three tfachim. You could sleep underneath that and eat underneath that and you're yaitzit, you're as if you're in the sukkah because you say the din of lavud. But if it's more than three tfachim of empty space, then it, you can't eat under there. But if you have schach puzzle over there, let's say you have metal studs as your schach, then the shear is four tfachim, not three tfachim. But by, by psach puzzle, you have an extra tefach, four tfachim. So the question is, this uh, vegetables that you're using as a roof, do we view it as schach puzzle or do we view it as empty space? So the answer is, technically, you should view it as chach posel because it could be mekabal tumah. It's a food. It's a vegetable. But we view it as avir, as empty space. And the reason is because eventually it's going to disintegrate and crumble. And it's not going to be there anymore. So right away, we view it, view it as empty space and has the smaller shear of three tfachim, not the larger shear of four tfachim. My timer, what's the reason? Since when it dries out, it crumbles and falls. Command the Lisnayu Domi as if we view it as if it's not there. Therefore, uh, it has a din of empty space. New Gemara, we're just going to do five more lines. Here we're talking about the Inyan of Yodos, which means Yodos are, let's say you know that if you touch uh, a metal cup, by the by the uh, tumor that touches the metal cup by the handle the ear of the of the metal cup it the whole cup becomes tummy because the the handle is connected to the cup 
you obviously you're not drinking from the handle you're drinking from the the receptacle but they're all one piece now same thing if you a tumor if you touch the stem of an apple right so it's one piece just because you touch the stem the whole apple becomes tummy what happens if a guy cuts grapes okay we'll have uh, grapes over here the grapes over here uh and he touches it and he's using the grapes for wine okay he's using the grapes for wine so he doesn't want the stem so therefore this even though there's stem there then it's almost as if they're not connected and therefore the tumor will not pass from the stem um uh, stems to the grape because your intention is to use this grape to make wine you don't want the stem and therefore that's not considered the hand the handle of the grape that's what rafuna said haboitzer who cuts grapes legas for the intention to make wine then the stems eloyodos the stems are not considered connected to the grape so if a tumor would touch the stem it would not the, the grape will remain pure rabnashi bargado marafuna he said an interesting thing a guy cuts wheat for schach right he cuts wheat for schach here's the wheat and he cuts the wheat now the wheat for the schach he really it's food but there's more you know uh, waste product in a, in a stalk of wheat that uh, we can consider it as kosher to be used as schach because you have more kosher parts for than than non kosher part but he cuts so he cuts the wheat so then if a tumor would touch the 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 part the stem it would not be metama the kernel that's inside because he's he's he doesn't want the kernel he doesn't even want the 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 piece of wheat the the food that's inside of it so therefore this is not considered connected to the kernel that's what he's saying someone who cuts wheat to, with the intention to use it as then the stem does not consider it connected to the to the kernel so if a tumor would touch the stem the the kernel inside will remain pure because your intention was not to eat the 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 kernel you actually want to get rid of it so the gemara says man the omar the one that said koitzer the one that said whoever cuts uh, for schach, wheat for schach, kolsh game, certainly he would hold, bites if you cut grapes for wine, ain't lo yodos, then you don't consider the stem connected. The loy nichele, the loy limtse lechamre. He doesn't want the stems, nobody wants the stems to go into your wine. So he, he just, he wants to get rid of it. So it, it, just like in the case of koitzer, you hold ain't lo yodos, certainly in the case of the grapes, you hold ain't lo yodos. But one more thing, but the one that held that when you cut through grapes, you don't say the stem is connected. That was only by grapes. By the case of the schach, when you're cutting the wheat of schach, we still consider it connected. Now, why? Why would he consider it connected? He doesn't want the, the kernel of uh, uh, grain inside of it, the food part of it. Yes, he does. The He really wants it to stay connected to the to the upper part of the of the wheat why so that it doesn't it, it has a weight it doesn't spread out if you took the top part off if you took the top part off the wheat right if you took the if you took the beard off the wheat or the leaves off the wheat or the head off so then even if you're going to use it the schach it's going to fly all over the place so so even if you cut this piece of wheat for schach you still want the heads of it to, to just weigh it down so it doesn't uh, fly off the uh, out of the roof, fly off your sukkah. So therefore, once you still want it connected, then you stay yesh lo yodos, that the stem is connected to the to the leaves and the top part, the beard. And therefore, if a tumor would touch the stem, the top part would remain uh, tame. That's the so remember this machlekes because we're going to continue on with this tomorrow. Again, cutting grapes. One said, Ain lo yodos, and or cutting schach, cutting wheat, Ain lo yodos. Thank you. Okay, very good. I got enough, everybody. A lot of things. Enough. <laughs> I, I tell you something funny. Yeah. The person, the person who used to supply schach to the people of Harrisburg, where I grew up, 
He used to supply uh, pine tree uh, and his name was Forest Straw. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Can't make, funny. can't make that up. <laughs> can't make that up. Can't make that up. They, did you have a oh. rabbi? Rabbi Silver was there, right? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. David yeah. Silver, yeah. my brother. Right. right, Rabbi Laser Silver's son. He was a genius. Um, yeah. Yeah, please. Well, his son Aaron is a rabbi at uh, um, uh, uh, Karen Avna in Israel. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. I imagine yeah. when, when they came out with the mats for the schach, people were saying that it could be a problem of chavilas, chavila eats him. I, I didn't, you know. Not but now it's not. But now no, it's not. No, it's now it's well accepted. But why is that? It's tied together. You, you're tying reeds together, we had a problem. Why, did, why didn't... I think it's because it's manufactured specifically only for that, for some reason. Is that a possibility? Possibly. It's really... I, I got to read proper for stuff. I don't know. No, because uh, about a year or two ago, they came out because of the ridiculous <laughs> price for schach, because they were just ripping all the Jews off. They came out with a list of which uh, beach mats, uh, beach fencing at Home Depot, which was like Eighteen dollars was actually okay for was kosher for for schach and it was amamish made um, yes it was made as a mat but it wasn't made for schach it was made as as to keep the beach to you know for beach fencing and it was the same exact mat not made for Jews and only cost about eighteen bucks. <laughs> huh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was actually a lot of shuls sent it out because uh, people are getting ripped off a hundred dollars yeah. per mat that really costs 10 bucks. Right, so, right, interesting, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I know in Williamsburg you won't find people using the mat, they're still using the bamboos, and the right? Tree. They're just heavy and they're hard yeah. to store. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, very good. Uh, good. 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 good night. Good night. Good night.